Hey, Matthews. Welcome to 7.4. Uh, in the last lesson, 7.3, we were taking uh, rational expressions and we were multiplying and dividing them. So you would have seen a uh, multiplication or a division sign right here. In 7.4, it's going to be uh, the same idea, except now we're going to be adding and subtracting uh, fractions. So without further ado, let's start adding and subtracting rational expressions. So what makes it rational? We have a uh, a letter, a variable, on the bottom of the fraction. So you see a bunch of fractions that we're adding or subtracting, and all of them have uh, variables on the bottom. So how do we do that? <clears throat> well, in general, to um, add or subtract fractions, let's see, you just take, let's say you had uh, four ninths plus uh, one ninth. Uh, if, as long as you've got a common denominator, then you just... Uh, turn it into one fraction, so 9 is our denominator, and then you just add the numerators. So it would be 4 plus 1, so it would be 5 ninths. So that's how you uh, add fractions. You just, as long as you have a common denominator, you just add the parts that are on the top, and you can uh, do it that way. So in number 1, we see that that works out pretty simply. We have a common denominator, so the bottom is just x minus 1. And then 1 minus 5 is negative 4, and we are done with problem number uh, one. Let's keep going. We have a common denominator, so we can just write it as one fraction. And now we have 4x plus x. 4x plus x is 5x. All right, number three. Look at us go. We have a common denominator, so I'll write the denominator as x plus 4. And on the top, we have 6x plus 24. Now on this one, you're going to notice that if you look at the top, uh, you notice how a 6 can be factored out of both of these? Uh, so if we do that, that's going to turn this into 6x plus 4 divided by x plus 4. And by doing that, you see that these can cancel out. So our answer is just 6. But you may, remember, you, excuse me, you may remember from the last lesson that if something like this got canceled out, but it was in the bottom of the fraction earlier in the problem, remember how you can't divide by 0. So uh, right here, if we had a negative 4 here, we would be dividing by 0. And if all you could see was the final answer, you wouldn't realize that negative 4 is no good. So we need to take a note that x may not be negative 4. That's an excluded value. And if you look back at your 7.3 notes, you'll get a refresher on that. Okay, number 4. Do we have a common denominator? Yep. So I can write it as one fraction. All right, so then on the top, it's going to be 2x squared minus 14x. Can I factor anything out on the top? They both have an x in it. They both have a 2 in it. So I could factor out a 2x. And that's going to leave me with, uh, what do I have to multiply 2x by to turn it back into 2x squared? The answer would be x. And what do I have to multiply 2x by to turn it back into negative 14x? The answer would be negative 7. OK, so now we have these x minus 7s canceling. So our final answer here will be 2x, but we need to point out, because if, if you just saw this, it doesn't look like there's any excluded values. But when you look back at the original problem, you see that x is not allowed to be 7. So 2x, but x is not equal to 7. And we've done it. Okay, so we've just added and subtracted four fractions, rational fractions. And uh, now we're going to up the d difficulty level on the second page. So that was the basics. Now let's take it to the next level. Oh, yeah. Okay. So if you look at problems... All right, so we'll move this a little bit. If you look at problems... There we go. Uh, 8 and 9... Uh, 10 and 11, you're going to notice that these no longer have common denominators. So uh, these were pretty straightforward because you already had a common denominator. These, we don't have a common denominator. So we're going to have to get a common denominator. The way you get a common denominator is you find something called a least common multiple. 
So for a little bit, before we go back to adding and subtracting fractions, we're going to do a little bit of a refresher on finding least common multiples because this is how you get a common denominator. So let's do it. So what we want to do is we've got two expressions here, one right there and one right there. What we want to do is we want to basically pretend like these are the bottoms, these are the denominators of fractions. So, so suppose we had a fraction and we had 9x to the third down here and then let's say we were adding another fraction and that other fraction had 3x squared minus uh, 21x, just to give you a little visual of, of how this might work. So if we wanted to get a common denominator here, how would we do that? Well, the first thing we would do is we would factor uh, each of these. So there's nothing to factor here. But on this one, each of these have a 3 in it, and each of them have an x that could be pulled out. So I'm going to pull a 3x out of here. And then what would I have to multiply uh, this by to get that? I'd have to multiply by x. What do I have to multiply 3x by to turn it into that? It would be negative 7, so minus 7. Okay, so now we've got 9x to the third. Okay, very good. So if these were fractions and we were adding them, we would need this to be a common denominator. So we've got a 3 here but a 9 here. And so if they're going to have that in common, they both have to have the same number. So can we agree we'd have to multiply this by 3? Uh, let's see, and we would have to, this is an x to the third here, so we would need this to be an x to the third. And then we've got an x minus 7 here, so if we were going to have a common denominator, we'd have to have an x minus 7 over here as well. So now we have 9x to the third, x minus 7, 9x to the third, x minus 7. Now we have a common denominator. So our common denominator would be 9x to the third, x minus 7. Cool. Uh, I bet you you might want to practice a couple more of these. So let's do uh, six and let's also do seven together just to make sure we're really good at them. So I'm going to move this over a little bit more. Maybe I can uh, bring it down a bit just so it's a little easier for you to see. Yeah, let's try it like that. Okay, so now we're doing number six. So I'm going to pretend they're both fractions and that they're the denominators of a fraction. Plus... 2x squared plus 11x plus 5. So if I've got 2x squared plus 11x plus 5, if I'm going to, I need to factor that. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to do an x, but because there's a number in front of the uh, squared term, I'm going to have to do the x box method. So we're going to do an x box method. I'm going to do that right here just to make it easy for us to see. So I've got an x. I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to 5 and that add to, excuse me, that's not true. When you've got a number in front of the squared term, you need to multiply these two together. I'm actually looking for a number that multiplies to 10 and adds to 11. All right, numbers that multiply to 10 and add to 11. 10 and 1, multiply them, add them, yeah. So this would now give us, okay, so what I cannot do is I can't just write it like this. This is bad. Because if there's a number in front here, you have to do the box as well. So I can't just go straight from there to there. I have to make a box. Look at me go. Okay, so now the 2x squared, the squared term goes right here. The number at the end goes down here. And then these 11 x's, this tells us how to split them up. So 10 of the x's will go in one of the boxes. And one of the x's will go in the other. All right, so again, this is all refresher. We did this in unit four in first semester, I believe. Okay, so now we're, so it's going to be 2x, x, um, 1, 5, multiply the 1 and the 5, yep. Okay, so our factors are x plus 5 and 2x plus 1. All right, so there's our little x box refresher. So we've got x plus 5 and 2x plus 1. All right, so if they're going to have a common denominator, both of these have to be the same. So this one needs a 2x plus 1. And now they're the same. So our common denominator is x plus 5 times 2x plus 1. And we've done number 6.
You may want to pause the video right now, try to do number seven on your own, and then um, if you run into any, uh, and then you can check your answer otherwise, or you can just do it together with me. So here we go. All right, so we need to pretend that these are the bottoms of fractions. We're like adding or subtracting fractions. Okay, so now I'm going to factor this. So I'm gonna make an X. So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to six, add to five. There's no number in front here, so I'm not gonna have to do that box thing. This is all I have to do. So this is gonna be three times two, and then it adds to it. So X plus three, X plus two. And then for this one, I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 18 and add to negative 3. So 6 and 3 make this one negative. So this one will factor as x minus 6 and x plus 3. All right, so I'm going to write those down there. So this factors to x plus 3, x plus 2. And this one factors to x minus 6, x plus plus three. Okay, so if we want these to have a common denominator, then this one is missing an x minus six. They both already have an x plus three. But this one's missing an x minus six, and this one is missing an x plus two. Okay, so now they have common denominators. So our least common multiple is x plus three, x plus two, and x minus six. Okay, so now that we've done our little detour of practicing getting common denominators, now we can actually attack these harder problems again. So let's go over here. Whoa, there we go. Whoa, perfect. Okay, so we're doing number eight. We want to add them. To add them, we need to get a common denominator. So, equals... I'm going to make the fractions a little bigger this time. And I've got 3 and 2x, and I've got 11 and 5x. Okay, so common denominator. This one has a 2 in it, but this one does not have a 2 in it. So I'm going to have to multiply this side by 2. But if I multiply the bottom of the fraction by 2, I have to multiply the top by 2 as well. Okay, very good. So now they both have a 2 in it. This one has a 5 in it that it's being multiplied by. This one needs to get multiplied by 5 as well. But if I multiply the bottom by 5, I have to multiply the top by 5. Okay, they're, they're starting to look more common now. Um, in fact, actually, they're exactly the same now, aren't they? 10x, 10x. So we've got now for our denominator, we've got 10x. And on the top, we've got 15 plus 22. Uh, 15 plus 22 is 37, right? So 37 over 10x. That's it. Okay, our excluded value is x cannot equal 0, but that's already obvious from looking at it right here. There's no other excluded values, so I don't have to do anything else there. Let's do number uh, 10 next, since we've got it uh, on the camera angle right now. So doing number 10, we need a common denominator. So here we go. Um, gonna make a big fraction, and then it's plus, and then another big fraction. We've got a 3x right here. We've got a 10 right here. This is already as factors as it can get, so I'm just going to write 2x plus 1, and I'm just going to put the parentheses around that. Uh, this right here, we're going to have to factor before we move it down here. Uh, we'll do that right here. Okay, so uh, we're going to have to do an x, uh, and there's a number in front of the squared term, so this is going to be like that one that we have to do the x and the box. So I have to multiply these two. I'm looking for numbers that multiply to negative 6. Remember to multiply those numbers together if there's a number right there. We're looking for numbers that add to negative 5. Uh, so what's that going to give us? 6 and 1. Yeah, that works. So uh, now we need to do the box. So we've got 2x squared goes here. Negative 3 goes there. And then negative 6 and 1, that's where the x's go. So negative 6x and x. Okay, so here we go. 
Woo. Okay, what can I factor out of both of these? A 2x. So I'd have to multiply this by to get it to be that. x. x times 1 would give us x. 2x times negative 3 would get us that. Negative 1, 1 times negative 3 gets us to there. Good. So our factors are 2x plus 1. That's convenient. And, oh, you can't even see that. Aw, oh, yeah, there we go. And our other factor is, here we go, was x minus 3. Very good. Okay, so to have a common denominator now, now that we've got it factored, uh, they both have that in common already. This one here is missing an x minus 3. So I'm going to put an x minus 3 there, but if I do it to the bottom, I have to do it to the top. So x minus 3. Okay, I have a common denominator, so now I can write it as one fraction. So it's going to be 2x plus 1 and x minus 3. All right, so here we have to actually expand this back out if we're going to add this and this. So just to clarify what we're doing, we're just taking all of this and adding it together. So this is actually 3x squared here. And then 3x times negative 3 is minus 9x. So it's going to be 3x squared minus 9x plus 10. So it's going to be 3x squared minus 9x plus 10. Oh boy. Okay, so to make sure we're actually done, I need to, um, I need to um, factor this, doing an x box to see if anything up here can cancel with anything down here. So let's do that. Okay, so I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to 3 times 10 is 30, add to negative 9. Uh, boy, I really hope this just doesn't work. Uh, that would be 10 and 3, that can't get to 9. 15 and 2, excellent, that doesn't work either. 6 and 5, that doesn't work. Are there any other numbers that would multiply to 3? 30. Sweet. It doesn't go any further. We're done. All right. Now, yeah, that's perfect. We're just done. All right. So now let's push over to ouchie. Sorry, class. That was a little aggressive. All right. Now we've got to do 9 and 11. Why don't you go ahead and stare at 12 and 13 right now and be thankful that I'm telling you to cross those out. So cross off 12 and 13. Uh, now we're going to do 9 and 11, and that is going to be the end of our note taking. So here we go. Let's wrap it up. Okay. We need a common denominator. So make the fractions a little bigger plus x minus 2, 15, x plus 8, 3. There we go. All right, so to have a common denominator, this one needs to have an x plus 8 in it. But if I put it on the bottom, I have to put it on the top. And this one has an x minus 2, so this one will have to have an x minus 2 as well. All right, but if I do it on the bottom, got to do it on the top. Okay, so now that I have a common denominator, I can turn it into one fraction. So x minus 2, x plus 8. And now I can combine all this together. Okay, so this is going to turn into 15x. Uh, let's see, 15 times 8 is 120, so plus 120. All right, plus 3x minus 6. 
All right, so I've got a 15x and a 3x. That makes 18x's. And I've got a 120 minus 6. That makes 114. Okay, can these each be divided by 18? If they can, I have to go further. So let's hope that they don't. Uh, 114 divided by 18. Can I factor that more? Yes, it doesn't work. This is it. We're done. And on to number 11. We're saving the longest problem for last, and we're getting almost done. So here we go. All right, we have three fractions this time that all will have to have the same denominator. So I'm going to make three fractions that are bigger so I have room to work with them. Fraction minus a fraction minus a fraction. All right, this one has an x minus 7 already and an x. This one has an x plus 1 and a 2. This one has an x. Okay, we're going to factor this one. Okay, so x squared minus 6x minus 7. Instead of just writing that down here, I'm going to do an x first and factor it. Looking for numbers that multiply to negative 7 and add to negative 6. All right, so what does that give us? That gives us 7 and 1, negative 7. So that's going to give us x minus 7 and x plus 1. So this is the same as this, and then I need to write the 8x on the top. Okay, so now that I've rewritten it and I've got room to work, now I need to uh, get a common denominator. So this one and this one has an x plus 1 in it, but this one doesn't have an x plus 1. So I need to put an x plus 1 down there, which I can do as long as I put it on the top as well. All right, so these both have an x minus 7, but this does not have an x minus 7. So I can put an x minus 7 down here as long as I also multiply the top by x minus 7. And now I have a common denominator. So now I can put it as one fraction, and I can write it as x plus 1 on the top and x minus 7 on the bottom. And now I can add or subtract, I guess in this case, all of these together. Okay, so let's distribute these real quick. x times x is x squared. x times 1 is x. Okay, now this minus here, trust me, you're going to want to do this. Cross out this minus and put it right here instead. Okay, thanks for doing that. Because now when we distribute this, we'll remember that it's negative 2x, and this is going to be negative 2 times negative 7, so it's actually going to be plus 14. And then again, this minus is going to go up here, so minus 8x. So I've got an x squared. There's no other squared terms, so x squared. All right, now my x terms, x, and then a minus 8x here and a minus 2x, so that's minus 10x plus x, so minus 9x. And now the numbers, plus 14. Okay, so the question is, can I go farther with the top? Can I factor the top? So I'm going to make an x. I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to 14 and add to negative 9. Oh, that's actually going to work, isn't it? Because 7 times 2, if both of these were negative, that would multiply to that and add to that. So this could be rewritten as x minus 7 over x minus 2 divided by x plus 1 times x minus 7. Okay, so now these can cancel. So for our final answer, we're going to get x minus 2 divided by x plus 1. Now, we know that x cannot be negative 1 because then we would be dividing by 0. If all we saw was the final answer, which is right here, you would think that the only excluded value is negative 1. But if you look back at the original problem, we see that 7 does not work as well. But you can't tell that just by looking at this. So we need to make a note that x is not allowed to equal 7, because that is not obvious by looking just at the answer. And now we have completely finished the notes, 
And that should give you a little bit of an idea of how to add and subtract rational um, rational expressions. So go to your 7.4 homework on big ideas and give it a go. Good luck.